What's up, everybody? In today's video, I will be giving you a first round mock draft with trades galore. If you haven't seen my last video, I did a two round mock draft with a lot of surprising picks and trades, but this time I'll keep it sweet and short and simple for you guys, first round only. So without further ado, let's hop into the video. So pick one, Chicago Bears. We all know where they're going. They gave Caleb Williams the keys to the organization to start building rapport with his teammates. So pick one, Caleb Williams. Pick two, the Washington Commanders. If you saw my last video, I chose Drake May with the theory of with Sam Howell going to Seattle, he didn't want to compete with his college backup. I understand that. But with pick two, um, I believe that the best fit is Jaden Daniels because I think with Cliff Kingsbury's offensive scheme and him being the offensive coordinator, I think he wants someone that has elite dual threat ability, kind of have that RG3 side of things to their ability. So let's go Jaden Daniels, pick two. Pick three, the New England Patriots. There have been rumors about them trying to trade back. If the Minnesota Vikings are calling, they can go Drake May. They could go JJ McCarthy here. But they went to Drake May's pro day. Yes, he has some erratic throws, but he has amazing arm talent. He's someone that's going to live and die by his arm. Yes, he's made some poor dishes, poor decisions, poor throws, but he has a very Josh Allen-like ability to his game. Dual threat, gunslinger, and the Patriots face Josh Allen twice a year. They know what kind of athlete Josh Allen is. So I think they kind of want to go that route and gain a quarterback with that similar skill set. So pick three, they'll go Drake May. Pick four, the Arizona Cardinals. Their phones are ringing. You have the Minnesota Vikings calling, the Denver Broncos calling, the, Oak, uh, the Las Vegas Raiders calling. But I just don't think that their Cardinals are going to want to go from four all the way back into like the high teens. Yes, there might be a great package being presented to them, but Kyler Murray needs a receiver. There's no Rondo Moore. They just, he needs someone to pass the ball to. And when you have a generational talent like Marvin Harrison Jr. on the board at pick four, I think the smart move for them is to just stay put, take Marvin Harrison Jr. Let's go get him. Pick five, their phones are ringing. Minnesota Vikings are calling. Denver Broncos are calling. Las Vegas Raiders are calling. They want their quarterback. They want a franchise quarterback. And now it's up to the Chargers if they want to move back that high. Um, It's going to take a large package for Jim Harbaugh to just sign off, be like, you know what, we'll take it. I'm not too sure if the Vikings, yes, the Vikings have 11 and 23, but I'm sure they're going to want a little more than just those two picks to kind of go back to like 11. Same thing with the Broncos. They're going to have to give up like, this first year, 2025 first year, 2026 first year. And I think that's way too much to go up that many spots. And the Raiders, I don't even think that have, they have that much capital to move that far. So I don't think any enticing packages are presented to the Chargers. They need receivers by then, just trading Keenan Allen to the Bears, releasing Mike Williams. They need some high-level talent in the receiver room with Malik Neighbors being there. They take Malik Neighbors. Pick six, the New York Giants. Now, they can stay put, take Roma Dunze, or they could be like, you know what? Well, we need a quarterback to sit behind Daniel Jones. He's not the long-term answer. Drew Locke is not the long-term answer. So we could go J.J. McCarthy here. But the last time that the Giants were around the situation and a quarterback was getting a certain type of buzz and they overdrafted him, it was Daniel Jones. I just think that J.J. McCarthy, the buzz is getting a bit too crazy. You know, ever since Jim Harbaugh started just talking his name up and up and up, J.J. McCarthy has been rising up the boards. I don't think the Giants should bite on that kind of smoke screen. I believe that will, they will be just overdrafting a quarterback at this situation. And besides, a quarterback isn't going to fix their, their situation. Um, there's more than a quarterback that needs to kind of rebuild that organization and make them be top contenders in the conference. And also, if they want a Super Bowl, they need to kind of build, right? Um, but they could. I don't think they should overdraft for McCarthy. 
they can stay with Roma Dunze, but I believe that offers will be presented for the Giants. Um, if the Giants are presented a package, whether it's a you know moving back a couple spots, grab an additional late round piece and a future asset, like maybe next year second round pick, I think that's something that could be intriguing, and maybe they could sign off on that. Um, but mock drafts is a world of what ifs, right? It's not exactly going to happen. It's our personal opinion. But let's live in the world of what ifs. I decided to make this first round mock draft galore trades. So let's go with the first trade here. The Giants are moved back a couple spots. They like what the Broncos had to present. So the Giants are going to trade with the Denver Broncos. The Denver Broncos are going to give up their 12th pick. So Denver Broncos... I apologize if you hear a car beeping. New York Giants, Denver Broncos. So Denver Broncos give up their 12th. They give up their 4th. And then they are going to give up a next year's second round. So the Giants are going back from 6 to 12, get an additional 4th, and they get a future asset for next year's second round pick. So they will have two second round picks next year. Shane signs off on that trade. Denver Broncos, desperate for a quarterback. They made a move up to pick six. They should be getting their quarterback, and they are going to get J.J. McCarthy. Pick seven, the Tennessee Titans. They need tackle help, and this pick is a no-brainer. We'll go Joe All to protect the blind side of Will Levis. Pick eight. The Atlanta Falcons, I do have them taking an edge here, but their phone is ringing. Who is it? It's the New York Giants. They want to creep up into the top 10 because they see Roma Dunze lingering. They think that the Bears are going to creep up and get him. The Jets might get him. So the Giants worked themselves back into top 10 for Roma Dunze. So there's a trade here. Atlanta Falcons, New York Giants. The New York Giants are going to give up their 12th. And they'll give up, let's let's try one other. Perfect. So the Giants are going to move up four spots. They're going to give up their 12th and give the Falcons a fourth of theirs. Trade. Pick eight. Look at that. Shane with the maneuvering, with the draft picks. He traded back, got a future asset, move up a couple spots, and they're still able to get Roma Dunze. Look at that. Pick eight, Roma Dunze. Pick nine, the Chicago Bears. They can go tackle, protect Caleb Williams. Nope, you see the Giants kind of beat them to the spot. So I think right here they go with a top edge and the best edge in this draft to be opposite of Montez Sweat. So pick nine, they go Dallas Turner. Pick 10, the New York Jets. Now, they did make moves in free agency to kind of build the line. So it is understandable for them to get, you know, a tackle, build the line up. But I also believe there should be more receiver options. And the next pick for the New York Jets is into the third rounds. And do you really think that the Jets are going to wait until the third round to see who's available as a pass cap pass catching option. I don't think so. You know, you have Garrett Wilson, you have Mike Williams, but what are the chances of, of Mike Williams staying healthy a full season? Because I could wait, right? Um, they do need a tight end. As you see, this is one of their top needs. And Brock Bowers, I mean, he has like George Kittle like abilities. He could work on the line of scrimmage, put him in the slot, work him out. He has um, receiving versatility that I believe that can help out the Jets and Aaron Rodgers. So I believe that they can go Brock Bowers here. I think they just go with uh, a tight end to kind of increase the receiving ability and help Aaron Rodgers spread the ball around, score more touchdowns in a very tough division. Pick 11, the Minnesota Vikings. So they can go quarterback obviously you know they have pick 11 pick 23 so they could definitely go quarterback here but i don't think bo nix is worthy of pick 11. um i think that might be a bit 
too high if you ask me um but let's keep searching around to see what they can do i say that there is a trade here we are you know with Kenyon mitchell here um very good possibility you get picked by the falcons picked by the raiders so i do believe in the worlds of what ifs, there's a trade here. We're going to go with the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, they do need secondary help. Yes, they can wait where they are and get Cooper DeGene, but he didn't test the combine. They can wait and get Kool Aid McKinstry. He didn't work out this combine. And I feel like the Eagles are a bit turned off by sitting there and waiting for those two prospects if they didn't really test the combine. So I think the Eagles get aggressive here and kind of help out their secondary. Darius Slay is getting up there in age. James Bradbury is getting up there in age. So the Eagles make an aggressive trade with the Vikings. The Vikings say, sure, we'll, we'll go back. We'll, we'll take that package. So Vikings 11, Philadelphia Eagles. They give up 22, 50. Trade. Pick 11. The Philadelphia Eagles, they get their corner. Kenyon Mitchell. Pick 12, the Atlanta Falcons. There is, you know, they can get a receiver, but as you saw, they have Drake London, Darnell Mooney, Rondo Moore. I think they're a bit set in the wide receiver room, so they're they're good there. So I think they go edge. Um, Jared Verse, he's a saint, an insane edge rusher in this class. I Dallas Turner, yes, he's an amazing edge, but Jared Verse had an amazing combine, and the Falcons need that kind of production on the edge. Jared Verse, pick thirteen, the Las Vegas Raiders. I do like them, you know, getting the getting a cornerback here, but. I just don't think that they can pass up a mauler in the trenches. Talise Fuwaga, I think it would be great, especially if the Raiders are kind of creeping and eyeing Michael Penix. And with him being a lefty, they, his blind side is the right side of the line of scrimmage. So I think they go Talise Fuwaga, right guard, right tackle, flexibility. So Talise Fuwaga. Pick 14, the New Orleans Saints. They can go tackle. That line needs help. Their car, they get hit a bit. They can go receiver here. Brian Thomas, I think might be a little bit of a, a reach there. But with Terry and Arnold, the Jaguars. The Jaguars are calling and saying, hey, we need help in our pass defense. We love Terry and Arnold. Um, so we'll present you a package. The Saints were like, all right, what do you have for me? Jaguars call. And this is what they're going to present to move up and get their corner. Corner back two in the draft. Let's go Jaguars, pick 14, pick 17. The Saints don't have a third round pick. So the Jaguars are like, you know what? We'll toss you our third round pick. They sign off in a trade. Pick 14, the Jaguars get a corner. They're going Terry and Arnold. Pick 15, the Indianapolis Colts. Now, had Brock Bowers stayed here, I would have loved Brock Bowers with the Colts. You know, Michael Pittman, Josh Downs, Alec Pierce, they have Jonathan Taylor, and then just having a safety valve for Anthony Richardson, that would have been huge for this offense. But he got taken by the Jets because they need some pass catching depth and, you know, more options for Aaron Rodgers. So he got picked. So they go cornerback here. They go with Nate Wiggins, yes, I do see that he's number 20, but I just think that they need to kind of work out that secondary. The secondary has been a bit leaky, so they go Nate Wiggins right here. Pick 16, the Seattle Seahawks. There's help on the tackle. They need help on the edge, interior lineman, D-line, D -line, but their phones are ringing. Who could it be? The Dallas Cowboys. Why? The Dallas Cowboys see Olu left on the board. Their left tackle is now with the Jets. Yes, the Cowboys can stay. You know, you'll have Tyler Guy in there. You'll have Amarius Mims. You know, you'll have some options there, but I just feel like 
Mims had limited action as a right tackle, and then Tyler Guyton's more of a project, and I don't think Jerry Jones would kind of want someone with project abilities to protect Dak Prescott, especially if they're going to give him a huge contract. So they want to just go up and get Olu, who's had a lot of experience on the left side, and they feel comfortable getting with someone that's a pure left tackle in the draft. So they call the Seahawks. They make a trade. The Seattle Seahawks, 16. Dallas Cowboys. They give up their 24. And let's say they give up. Let's go third. Nope, not enough. Okay. All right, so the simulator saying is not enough. So let's see what we can do to move up eight spots. So we'll go 24. We'll go third. Let's go six. Damn, okay. Let's, let's keep working. Let's keep working here because Cowboys are desperate for that left tackle spot. So let's go 24. Let's go 87. They don't have a fifth. All right, we'll work it out. World of what ifs. Let's say Cowboys give them a good package just to move up eight spots and give them a tackle that they love and want. So we'll trade here. Pick 16, the Dallas Cowboys. They're going to get their pure left tackle in the draft. He is like left tackle two behind Joe Alt. They love that. So they go Olu. Pick 16. Pick 17, the New Orleans Saints. Yes, they have JC Latham here. They have Troy Fautinu here. But with Michael Thomas not there anymore, I think that Chris Olave wouldn't like to have a partner, like a Batman-Robin kind of duo in the passing game. So they go receiver here. Brian Thompson Jr., Derek Carr has an option of Olave, Brian Thompson. I think that will give the New Orleans Saints amazing pass catchers, and I think that would be huge for this offense. I believe that by them trading back a bit, they can you know work on the line later in the draft, but they get Brian Thomas Jr. to kind of be a good partner for Chris Olave. Pick 18, the Cincinnati Bengals. They can go J.C. Latham here to protect Joe Burrow. They can go D-line, Byron Murphy. He's an amazing tackle. They could go tight end. Don't think it's there. Adonai Mitchell, a bit too high. Their phones are calling. Who could it be? The Minnesota Vikings. They have pick 22, pick 23. I don't think they want to go back-to-back -back, You know, first-round pick, so they kind of move up a little bit. So... They're going to trade with the Cincinnati Bengals. Pick 18, Minnesota Vikings. They're going to give up their 22nd. And let's say they have, I mean, they have two fourth round picks. So let's say they give up um, one of them. Minnesota Vikings will give the Bengals pick 22, fourth round 108 to move up four spots to pick 18. Sign off the trade. Now, the Minnesota Vikings had a hard time stopping the run. Now that the Packers have Josh Jacobs, he is a bruiser back. Now you're in a division with the Chicago Bears. They love to run the ball. Now you're in a division with um, Jesus, Packers, Vikings, Bears, and the Lions. David Montgomery, Jamar Gibbs, they're going to need to stop the run if they want to be competitive in this division. So they go Byron Murphy. Pick 19, the Los Angeles Rams. They need help at edge. A lot of twos to sit in there. I think he's an amazing edge. Yes, there are some injury concerns where he may fall down in the draft, but he's still there. They can go D-tackle. Aaron Donald has retired, so there is a huge hole on the D-line. But with... Cooper DeGene still lingering. There's a good chance that he gets picked by the Steelers. Good chance that he get picked by the Vikings. But the Packers are calling. The Packers are like, hey, we love Cooper DeGene. Yes, he did not test at the Combine, but we have Xavier McKinney. If he's our Batman, we need a Robin in the safety game. And Cooper DeGene could play safety, nickel, corner. I think Jeff Halfley will have a field day with that kind of Swiss Army knife ability. And the Packers are calling at pick 19 to Los Angeles Rams. 
pick 19. The Packers have 11 picks this year, so they have some draft capital to move up. So move up six spots, leave them 25. They give up one of their second. Oh, too much. All right. That's a little too much, so let's go. Let's go 25. And let's give um, a third. So the Packers will give up their 25th pick and their second, third pick, 91, to move up a few spots with the Rams trade. This is such a Packers pick and maybe such as a Packers move. I mean, they traded up and got Darnell Savage a few years ago when he was a safety. And I believe they traded up a few years ago to get Jair Alexander. When the Packers are going to trade up, most likely it is a defensive pick. And by them trading up, they get the most Packer pick in the draft. And this is Cooper DeGene. Pick 20, the Pittsburgh Steelers. They cut their center, Mason Cole. And without a doubt, I believe that the Steelers will go the route of getting a pure center in the draft, JPJ. So JPJ to Pittsburgh Steelers. The Miami Dolphins. What are we going to do with the Dolphins? I mean, they can stay at pick 21. I mean, there's help, there, you know, there's help on the line. They need help there. Um so who could be – so should they J-pack? I mean, the thing about the Dolphins is, like, they don't have a lot of draft capital. So I can see them being a team that can just, fall, like, you know, trade back and get some capital. So let's see who they can trade with. I, I think the Dolphins will be smart to kind of trade back and just add some capital to this draft. I mean, look at that. They only have the 21st. They have their second, and their next pick after their second round pick is into the fifth. So I think we should kind of look around to see who's willing to kind of move up a bit. Do the Bucks move up? Do the Ravens move up? The San Fran move up? Let's see who's on the board to see who would want to move up and get their guy. You know what? Nah. Nah. Yes, I know I said that they could trade back, but I think with Troy Fontenu still there, he could play left tackle, left guard. I mean, he could probably play right guard. I mean, he's such a versatile prospect where you could kind of just move him anywhere. I mean, hell. I mean, you could try him at center if you want, but he's such a versatile lineman in this draft. Um. I think it would be smart to for the Dolphins to kind of just stay put and just get Troy. He's such a pure lineman. So the the, my, the Dolphins stay. They get Troy Fontenot. Pick 22, the Cincinnati Bengals. They went from 18 to 22. J.C. Latham is still there. They added more capital, and they still get the tackle that they were eyeing in the draft. So win for the Bengals. They still get J.C. Latham right there. Pick 23, the Minnesota Vikings. They can go corner, get Kool-Aid McKinstry. They can go edge. They can go quarterback, cornerback. But honestly, with them being at pick 23, I think this is a quarterback pick. I think they get Bo Nix. I think Bo Nix would be a great fit for this offense. Yes, I mean, he was in a, a great scheme with Oregon. Through a lot of screen passes, but I just think that with them, with them, with the Vikings having Aaron Jones, Justin Jefferson, Jordan Allison, TJ Hawkinson, I think they give Bo Nix great weapons that he can work with. He's one of the most pro ready prospects in the draft. So the Vikings go quarterback, Bo Nix. So they went Byron Murphy, then pick 23, Bo Nix. Pick 24, the Seattle Seahawks. There's help on the line that they can get they can get Grant Bart in. Omarius Mims is Mims is there. They can go edge a lot too. But I say they build up the offensive trench and they go Graham Bart in here. He can play both guard positions, left guard, right guard, or even center. We'll go Graham Bart in here for the Seattle Seahawks. Pick 25. The Los Angeles Rams. They can go D tackle, 
Latu still there. Latu would be a great pick on the edge, but with Aaron Donald retiring, there's a huge gap on the D line. And I know a lot of you are going to probably going to see this like Jazan Newton is an underside D tackle. I understand that, but look at Aaron Donald. Look at the career he had. He was an undersized D tackle. Amazing talent. I'm not saying Newton is Aaron Donald, but I just feel like Newton is such a great prospect where it's kind of like a 1A, 1B D tackle with you know Newton and Byron Murphy. And Newton could hold his own as a pass rusher and a rush um, as a rush defender. So I think they go with an undersized D tackle here and they go Jazan Newton. Pick 26, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They can go corner, Kule McKinstry, but with the fall of Latu, Todd Bowles would have a field day with his versatility. So with Latu falling down the draft, they get Latu. Pick 27. Pick 27, the Arizona Cardinals. This is the second of their first round pick. Um, There's Chop. But honestly, I think they go corner. Kool-Aid McKinstry, I think the fall stops for Kool-Aid here. So they go Kool-Aid McKinstry. The Buffalo Bills. Gabe Davis is gone. Who knows what happens with Stephon Diggs. He might get traded. But let's give Josh Allen weapons. Adonai Mitchell is a great prospect. I think they go receiver here. That'd be a great pick. Offensive line. All right, pick 29, the Detroit Lions. They really need help in the cornerback position. I think they need someone that can play press man coverage. As you see here, there's Enix Rickshaw. Um, You also could give someone like an opposite side of Aiden Hutchinson, Chop Robinson. But I think... There, I think there could be a trade back here. Uh, let's see who could probably trade. That I'm saying there could be a trade back, so let's see what what who could present a good offer. Uh, no, no. Let's stay put. Let's go, Ennis Rakeshaw. I can make another video for a two round mock draft. We could get a little crazy with this, but we're going first round only. Um, but let's go Eric Rakeshaw. I think they need press man coverage help. He didn't have a lot of interceptions, but he's someone that would just jam you at the line of scrimmage and create havoc to give um, wide receivers a hard time to get their roots. So Eric Rakeshaw. Pick 30, the Baltimore Ravens. I believe they go tackle here, build up the trenches a little bit. Amarius Mims has been falling down a bit, but I think the fall stops with Amarius Mims. I think it would be a great prospect for the Baltimore Ravens. They go Amarius Mims here. Pick 31, the San Francisco 49ers. We don't know how long Trent Williams is going to play left tackle. And I think it will be a smart decision to get someone like Tyler Guyton he could play left tackle, right tackle, but he's a developmental prospect in this draft. He could sit behind Trent Williams, Williams, learn the game a little bit. He has huge upside, great mobility, and I think Kyle Shanahan will love that kind of prospect to kind of be in the wings waiting for the opportunity when the time comes. So Tyler Guyton to the 49ers and pick 32, the Kansas City Chiefs. They can go tackle here, but let's – go with a receiver they have Rashi Rice they have Hollywood Brown for one year let's build up the receiver core you have Xavier Worthy speedy speedy guy Liam McConkey I think he's more of a day two kind of pick Keon Coleman tall prospect he has some inconsistencies Troy Franklin you know greater Oregon great system but we're gonna go with a surprising pick here might shock everybody And don't be surprised if he sneaks in the late first round to the Chiefs. Don't be surprised. We are going Xavier Leggett. He has Debo Samuel-like ability. The irony of what I just said, Debo Samuel played at South Carolina. Xavier Leggett came out of South Carolina. His quarterback was Spencer Rattler. That team wasn't a great team, but he did the most 
with Spencer Rattler and just imagine what he can do with a receiver like Patrick Mahomes. I think that would elevate elevate his ability, and I think that would be huge for this offense. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. My first round mock draft with surprising trades, surprising picks, but stay on the lookout. I'll do a similar thing. Round two, maybe a 2.0 sequel to it. But thank you so much, and I'll see you guys next week.